Hi everybody, this is Chris Cole from Sweet Valley Hives. And you may or may not have seen on our Facebook page that we are back to keeping bees. It's been a couple years since we've uh, had bees. Uh, we have given up the manufacturing end of this business. It's just too difficult for us to uh, manage everything with that. Uh, but I had an interesting uh, observation here. We set up nine worry hives and one brand new hive called a Layens hive. It's a, an old design that's done very well. It's got a great history. But something happened with the Layens hive that did not happen with the Wari hives. And I just kind of wanted to point that out. The Layens hive, this is just a week out and it is dead. The bees, unfortunately, just did not make it. You can see by the front of the hive that they took to it very quickly when we installed them. All the Wari hives are going gangbusters. They, they're uh, clustered up at the top, they're making comb already, they're bringing in pollen, they're foraging, doing all the things that, that we expect our honeybees to do. The difference between the worry hives and that laying hive with survivability, I believe, was this component right here, and that's the quilt box. This layer of insulation. We're located in northeastern Pennsylvania, and we put these in on Mother's Day last week. And in the, this past week, it's gotten down to where there was frost on the ground. So it got down below 32 degrees. And the worry hives, because of this quilt box, I believe, in my opinion, survived. And the Layens hive did not. A lot of the bees I found in there were actually frozen in place. And they warmed up when the sun came and they started moving again, but they eventually died off. So... That's just one plug for the Worry Hive design. It's why I'm so impressed with this design and why I like to keep my bees in it. Now, one other thing. When I was installing these bees, I noticed a hive beetle in one of the packages. So I have to assume that there are hive beetles in every one of my hives right now. And so I'm taking some proactive measures and these are actually closed up. So before I close up these two, I wanna show you what I'm doing. I took some Swiffer sheets I put a little strip of frying oil down the middle just as an enhancement. There's our girls. Don't they sound nice? And they are just going about their business. And I put it above the propolis screen. This is an eight mesh propolis screen that's on here that the hive beetles can get through. And there may be some questions whether or not female hive beetles can fit through, but I'm going to leave it in place as is so the bees do not get tangled in it. Although I've seen on other videos that it doesn't affect the bees, I'm still going to put it above the propolis screen for now and see what happens. And that is it. Now, this is actually a temporary bee yard. Our ultimate goal is to clear out this entire area. There's a stream about 100 feet in. And we're going to clear out this area uh, with chainsaws, bulldozers, and a lot of back work. And we're going to put our bee yard back in there. Which means that we're going to need to transport these hives. So there's a video coming up where we're going to have to be moving these hives. And the old adage used to be three feet or three miles. But there's a lot of folks out there on YouTube, and beekeepers, that will tell you that's not necessarily the case. That... Uh, um, a sprig of pine in front of the entrance, anything to disrupt the bees will cause them to reorient. So we're going to be going over that and looking at that over the course of the summer. So for now, that's it. I'm Chris Cole of Sweet Valley Hives and happy beekeeping to all of you.